Thank you very much, Mr. President. It is an honor for me to brief the Council on the situation in Darfur and on the work of UNAMIT, in line with the Secretary General's 90 days report that is already with you. I also wish to take this opportunity to acknowledge the presence of Mr. Niels Annen, the Honorable Minister of State of the Federal Foreign Office of Germany. As you all know, the Secretary General's report covers the period up to the 3rd of April. A lot has happened since then, in Sudan in general, and in Darfur in particular. Assistant Secretary General Bintu Keita already briefed you on the 12th of April on the removal of President Omar al-Bashir. It will be appropriate to update you on key developments since then. As you know, General Awad Ibn Auf, former Vice President and Defense Minister, who took over as the head of the Military Transitional Council following the change, resigned a day in response to popular demands by protesters who spearheaded the demands for change of government. He named General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan as his successor. Upon assuming position, General Al-Burhan announced a number of steps aimed at stabilizing the situation. This includes lifting the daily curfew across the country, release of political detainees and ceasefire all over the country, among other measures. The Military Transitional Council has also indicated that it will carry out reforms of some of the government's institutions including the National Intelligence and Security Services. Indeed, the MTC is replacing hierarchy government officials who are said to be unpopular with demonstrators, perhaps in an attempt to gain trust and confidence. Yesterday, the Chief Justice and the Attorney General were replaced. General Al-Burhan announced further that the military transitional phase would last a maximum of two years, ending with handover of power to a civilian arrangement. However, the President, protests continue in Khartoum and other parts of the country, with a sit-in at the Sudan Armed Forces headquarters demanding the immediate transfer of power to civilians. It is worth noting that the Military Transitional Council has since initiated dialogue with the Declaration of Freedom and Change, the umbrella body of the protesters and other elements of the opposition, on a feasible transitional mechanism that would be all-inclusive and representative of all Sudanese interests. In an important development, the African Union and Peace Security Council on the 15th of April issued a communique calling of the Military Transitional Council to install a transitional civilian authority within 15 days, failing which Sudan would be suspended from participating in all AU activities. While there has been no reaction so far by national stakeholders, the Military Transitional Council is likely to consider the AU PSC statement a setback. Mr. President, the changes at the federal level have an obvious impact on Darfur. Since the removal of President Bashir, IDPs and other protesters in Darfur have been engaged in violent acts, including arson on premises of national intelligence and security services and the ruling party, as well as houses of community leaders perceived to have collaborated with the previous regime. Such incidents occurred in many locations, including in El Fashe, Nyala, Kas, Zalinje, Golo, Netiti, Kutum, Kabkabia, Saraf Umra, El Janina, and Mone. In Kalma IDP camp, clashes between IDP youth groups on the 13th April led to the reported death of 15 IDPs. There have been reports of confrontation between the Sudan Armed Forces and Nice in Darfur, particularly where SAF attempted to protect protesters. Let me assure the Council that in the midst of all these developments, 
UNAMID has remained vigilant, maintaining a robust posture, particularly in the Jebel Mara area of responsibility, which is where we have peacekeeping troops. The mission's day-to-day -day operational activities continue. We have intensified our patrols, particularly in and around IDP camps, and we continue interacting with partners on the ground. With regard to the safety and security of UN personnel and assets, I'm pleased to report that so far, the UN has not been a target. All our staff are accounted for. Mr. President, allow me to now focus on the Secretary General's report before you. With the adoption of Resolution 2429 on 13 July 2018, the mission continued with, with its reconfiguration and drawdown. The reduction of military component from 8,735 to 4,050 personnel by the 30th June 2019 is on track. The strength of UNAMID police also decreased from 2,500 to 2,283 personnel. The UNAMID police advisors have been deployed to state lives and functions and are also co-located with the Sudan police force. UNAMID and the United Nations country team also continue to implement the transition strategy in preparation for missions withdrawal. In this regard, 15 million US dollars was allocated to state lives and functions in the 2018-2019 UNAMID budget for implementation of programmatic activities with 10 individual United Nations country team entities with which UNAMID has signed memoranda of understanding in the areas of rule of law, human rights, and resilience and durable solutions for IDPs and host communities. UNAMID staff integrated with United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees have expanded protection monitoring to return areas and areas for which UNAMID has withdrawn. Similarly, United Nations Development Program and UNAMID have adjusted conflict prevention projects to improve targeting and increase sustainability after the mission's eventual exit. UNAMID staff are also supporting United Nations Population Fund in strengthening prevention and response to gender-based violence, including community-based mechanism. As regards programmatic activities, a shift in focus from institution to community-based projects may be required in light of the continuation of the state of emergency and uncertainties surrounding the transition modalities. Mr. President, the security situation in Darfur remained calm in the reporting period. However, clashes between the government and SLA Abdul Wahid in Jebel Mara were more frequent but contained to a few locations, while the footprint of the Sudan Armed Forces was readjusted in recent weeks to focus on urban areas in light of the protests. On the 28th January, the government extended the unilateral cessation of hostilities indefinitely, while the movements extended the ceasefire for three months on 8, January, 8 February. Incidents of intercommunal clashes also remained low, while some violence continued to occur between herders and farmers, mainly in North and West Darfur. Humanitarian partners continue to provide assistance in Darfur with a focus on provision of life-saving needs to vulnerable groups through basic social service delivery, particularly for newly displayed, I, I, displaced IDPs and those affected by conflict. However, their activities continue to face challenges in accessing some areas in Jebel Mara localities in South and central Darfur due to continued restriction of access by Sudanese authorities on security grounds. UNAMID experienced a total of 10 access denials and two restriction of movement compared to seven in the previous reporting period. Such access denial prevented UNAMID from verifying reported fighting in several areas of Darfur. In an unexpected development, 
a UNAMID integrated patrol on humanitarian escort to Fiena village in South Daku on 26 March was denied access by an SLA Abdul Wahid commander. Mr. President, UNAMID continued to engage the government to further strengthen the mechanism for addressing human rights concerns in Darfur. During the reporting period, UNAMIT documented 59 new cases of human rights violations and abuse involving 129 victims. UNAMIT also continued to support the re-establishment of the criminal justice chain in return areas with rehabilitation of rural court and construction of a district court, three rural courts, a land registry and prison dormitories for both male and female prisoners in North Daku. UNAMIT, in collaboration with the Sudanese judiciary, also organized mediation training for 25 rural court judges and provided capacity building support through training on human rights and prison duties for 59 newly recruited prison staff. The implementation of the Doha document for peace in Darfur continued to face challenges as a result of capacity and resource constraints. With regards to the peace process in Darfur uh, and in the context of the changes that have taken place in recent days, the call by the Military Transitional Council on the non-signatory armed movements to engage politically and be part of the ongoing di dialogue is yet to materialize into a tangible response. In a recent statement signed by Malik, Mr. Malik Aga and Mr. Minimanawi, the Sudanese Revolutionary Front, which includes the Sudan Liberation Army Minimanawi, the Justice Equality Movement, Jibril, and the Sudan People's Liberation Army, they distance themselves from the ongoing discussions between the Transitional Council and the Declaration of Freedom and Change Forces, saying it was too early to hold a meeting with the Military Transitional Council. However, the SLA, Miniminawa and Jem Jibril have indicated to the mediation that they still intend to pursue the Darfur peace process in a manner that addresses the underlying causes of the conflict. Their reasoning is that there is a risk should the Darfur peace process be meshed into the current dialogue because that can cause, that could lead to conflict in the first place and may not be properly and independently addressed. In this regard, UNAMIT, acting in consultation with the Special Envoy of Qatar and in support of the African Union High Level Implementation Panel, continues to seek ways of commencing talks between the movement and the Sudanese authorities. Mr. President, on his part, the leader of the Sudan Liberation Army, Abdul Wahid Noor, issued a statement on the 13th April rejecting Transitional Military Council, terming it as an attempt to reproduce the previous regime. Council should call on him to seize the opportunity and engage politically with the Sudanese authorities. At this juncture, I wish to say that while we are on track with the mission's drawdown process, the political situation in Sudan has drastically changed and has the potential to affect our mandate implementation going forward. For instance, we were scheduled to hand over the Sector East headquarters in El Dain on 15 April. We have since delayed this handover by two weeks, pending further clarity as the state administration keeps changing. UNAMIT, meanwhile, is in the process of establishing contact and working relations with the new administration at both federal and state level. Mr. President, DAFU is not and cannot be immune from the, what is happening at the national level. The incidents of violence in DAFU IDP camps in reaction to the events in Khartoum attest to the fragility of the security situation in DAFU which had hitherto been increasingly calm and stable. With the exception of the Mara area, it is my hope that the situation does not deteriorate further and have a negative impact of the UNAMIS envisaged exit. Mr. President, the current situation, must, much as it may not be desirable, 
provides a chance for the Sudanese to seize the opportunity to resolve all their conflicts, including the one in Darfur. Council should urge the people of Sudan to have a holistic and all-inclusive approach that is representative of all Sudanese. I thank you for your attention.